Today I'm going to show you how I took this clip, which has a lot of terrible sensor dust, and how I was able to use Content Aware Fill to remove the sensor dust and make it look like this. Stick around. So I won't bore you with a lot of talk up front. I'm just going to get into how I removed the sensor dust. But then if you stick around afterwards, I will show you, I'll talk a little bit about how I ended up with this problem in the first place and then ways to avoid that in the future. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna show you a sample of the first attempt that I did at removing the dust. For this one, I did not use Content Aware Fill. Instead, I used the spot removal feature in Lightroom and you can see it didn't turn out too well. So what I then did is I went back into Lightroom and I exported an image sequence of this time-lapse, including the terrible sensor dust, so that I would have a quote-unquote clean image, aka a dirty image, to be able to work with to do the dust removal. Now the next part is the most tedious step. After you load the image sequence into After Effects, you'll have to go over it very meticulously and create masks for each dust spot. This can take some time, particularly if your clips have as much dust as mine did, but it's the most important step in the process for getting a clean image. Now I recommend creating just one mask at first, setting the blend mode to none, adding a little bit of feather, and making it only a little bit bigger than the dust spot that you're trying to remove. From that point on, you don't need to create each new mask from scratch, but instead just copy and paste that mask that you've already been working with. Once you're happy with the masking you've done, set all masks to subtract, then go to the Content Aware Fill panel. Set the fill method to Edge Blend and click Generate Fill Layer. So that should take care of most of the dust. For myself, after I had done this once through, I realized that there were still some specks that bothered me. So I did a second round of masking and dust removal because I really wanted to make sure as much dust was removed as possible. Of course, after completing everything, you'll want to export the clip so that you've got a finished version of it. For myself, I always create archive masters, and for these I usually make the native resolution file, and then I make a 4K 16x9 video file that uses the crop that I like for the clip. And these are what you would save as your masters and have for archiving and for uploading to stock footage sites. So how can we avoid this problem in the first place? When we're shooting in the future, what can we do to make sure that we don't have this? Well, obviously, first of all, you can clean your sensor more often. What I would say is there is some risk involved in cleaning your own sensors. Personally, I don't think it's terrible risk if you do it very carefully, but if, the, if you're risk averse, contract it out, send your camera to either the manufacturer or to a camera shop and have them clean the sensor for you. But that said, it still happens all the time that dust starts to get on the sensor. So in those cases, the, one of the things that I highly recommend and I did not implement back then is to use ND filters while shooting. If I had used an ND filter, it would have given me the ability to open up the aperture dramatically. The more you open up the aperture, the more, the softer any sensor dust will get to the point that it's negligible. You would not even notice it once you get to a very open aperture. Basically to avoid it, my recommendation is clean your sensor, and then if you're unable to clean your sensor, use ND filters, and that should make it that you can avoid seeing that sensor dust. So that's it for this video, and I'll see you in the next one.